Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number 158 of the Savvy Social Podcast. This show is brought to you by Fan Booster by Traject, which is the world's most complete social media management tool. And it's my tool of choice when it comes to scheduling, managing, and especially reporting on social media. Try them out for yourself for free by clicking the link in our show notes. Now, today I'm excited because we have a special guest, Grace Steffi, on the show. Grace is a virtual events manager at Restream, where she oversees their involvement in industry events both big and small. She looks after a series of live shows hosted by a phenomenal lineup of live streaming experts on the Restream channels. Grace is also the co-host and producer of Social Media News Live, a weekly live show and podcast that keeps you up to date on what's happening in the world of social media. And in this episode, we're talking all about live streaming in 2021 and the power of that. With that, Grace, welcome so much to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be asked to be on your show. Yes, I'm excited because I love talking to other experts in the industry about what's new and what's happening. But let's start off with your story and your history. Um, How did you get into the world of social media and how did you begin working for Restream? (laughs) Well, I I, I have a very historical story of, of being in the world of social media. I have been in it for so long that I was actually on the team that launched the MySpace page for the Travelocity Gnome. And (laughs) I'm not even kidding. And and we also had a Yahoo 360 page, so which I know just shut down this last year, pouring one out for you, Yahoo 360. But, (laughs) or Yahoo Answers, actually. So yeah, I've been in social media marketing for a long time. My background Or what I really wanted, what I really wanted to do when I first started out was to work in advertising. I wanted to work on like sexy car ads and airlines. And we had all of those accounts at our agency, but they put me on um, Texas Instruments, which is, you know, a a microchip manufacturer. And I was the youngest person on the team. And they're basically like, ugh, give her all the digital marketing stuff. Like, it's not going to amount to anything. Like, I mean, they were making like ads for and airlines, major cars, they're like, yeah, just give her, just give the kid the digital stuff, right? Well, who would have known 20 years later, here we are on the internet having a live show that we were producing yeah. in our remote location. So uh, that's kind of how I got started into social media marketing. Um, I was, I was at the, I worked for Social Media Examiner for several years on their editorial staff, and they had a show called the Social Media Marketing Talk Show. And I produced that for several years, like gathering all the news for it. And one day they're like, why don't you get on camera? And I was like, no, I don't like the camera. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to do. I thought like that first episode, I literally had to like strap myself into the chair, not wander off. Like I powdered my nose like 40,000 times. And that first time I was so nervous that I, I was hooked. It was hooked just like that live interaction, the ability to talk to your audience, the ability to just and I actually do better live than I do on a pre-recorded video. So if you were to tell me to do this interview pre-recorded, it would take me four hours. Whereas like I could talk to you forever, actually. But you know, here we are just talking and it's just real, it's live and it's exciting. Yes. Oh my gosh. We have so many similarities because I was I used to work for Marriott, youngest person on the team, and they were just like, you post to Facebook. And I was like, this, can this part be my whole job one day? And they're like, yeah. that, no, no, that won't happen. And here no. we are. I know, um, right? <laughs> so wild. So, and I love live video as well. I love the, the realness of the connection. Um, I get this like weird, like, I just, I, I don't know. I like conversation, basically the two way mm-hmm. dynamic conversation really helps. Um, mm-hmm. So, so interesting. And so now you work with Restream yes. um, and you, you, you help them produce live shows. Is that correct? Yes. So we, as you mentioned at the intro, thank you so much for that, by the way, I do uh, produce, oh, well, I don't produce, but I do manage our, our uh, team of live video experts and streamers that produce content for our channels. You can find that on YouTube, LinkedIn, and on Facebook. So uh, every day of the week, we're launching shows. We have one currently right now on how to get started podcasting, basically from beginning to end, how to do a run of show, how to produce it, how to create it, how to use Restream to uh, to record the audio, similar to what we're doing right now, to all the way to having your own podcast. We have a show on how to create the graphics. So uh, one of the things we like about I love about Restream is that you can create this fully branded experience just 
from your browser, right? But then you, know, you get into like the overlays, the thumbnails and all that. And just like, I don't know about you, but I, I can critique it. <laughs> I can't really create it, right? And so we have a show that teaches you how to do it right in the tools that you already have access to, things like Canva, right? Which are just readily available for everyone. We have shows on how to be confident on camera, how to... Um, how to create a video ads campaign around your live shows. So if you uh, if, if, if you have it, you have a question about it, we probably have an answer about it on our channels. Okay, yes. And I love that's what I love about Restream. I know I'm not trying, I'm trying not to turn this into a Restream ad, but honestly, y'all, <laughs> it is really <laughs> easy to get started. And in fact, what I'll do now is um, pop up on the screen. I have a free guide that walks you through how to create your own live stream. It's kind of my process to live streaming. You can find it at onlinedrea.com slash live stream. And side note, I use Restream, uh, which I love. But let, let's talk about this. Let's talk about the power of live streaming because, you know, for a lot of us, we're like you when we first started. Like, how, I don't want to. I don't want to get on camera. I don't. I don't want to put my face on the screen. Um. So talk to to us about why. Why is this live streaming so important, especially now in two thousand and twenty one. Well, I definitely think that live video is a unique way to tell your brand story, especially if you are using social media as part of your marketing initiatives, because social media sites do prioritize live video over pre-recorded video, and you get that instant connection, right? It's that, you know, as we're chatting now, I know we're going into live live in some groups or your group, and um, you know, we're getting comments, right? You're getting that live interaction, and so there's no other way. I mean, even like even on social media, there's a little bit of a delay when someone tells a comment then you write you a comment, then you have to respond. But in live video, it is happening as we speak, right? And you can address the questions right away. You can engage with your audience. Um, it's, you know, it's an interesting way to captivate and connect with your audiences. And also we've seen how it's helped companies uh, grow their business, generate leads, expand their audience. It's just a good way to get yourself out there. And especially if you are an entrepreneur like yourself, um, it's a good way to position your, it's a best way, I think, to position yourself as an expert, a subject matter expert, an industry expert. And it allows you, someone who has these skills, this knowledge with the people that are curious, the people that are interested. It's a good way to tell, to be personable and to have that one-on-one -on -one experience that, you know, you can, that you just can't do with a social media post or you can't do with an ad, right? So when I look at you on screen, I see your excitement. I see your passion. I hear the tone in your voice and how, how passionate you are about what you do. And that's a connection that you can only do, I think, with live video. Yes. And that's what I love too, as well, is that it brings the personality piece back to social media, which sometimes can feel a little bit anonymous. I mean, we see this all the time with kind of people leaving comments and the way they behave and interact on social media. It's almost like not human. <laughs> and so the, the live component of it does bring that human nature back to it. Um, so do you have any examples for us for how businesses can leverage live video? Because I think some of it is, you know, what do, what do I do? How do I create a show? What do I say? What is the subject matter? So I'd love for you to share some of what you're seeing in the industry of live video as well. Absolutely. Well, I have three examples for you, actually. Uh, there's a company that we, that partners with us is, um, I think it's like Hey Digital is the name of the agency and the founder is Dylan Hay. And he owns a SaaS marketing company, I think in Estonia. <laughs> and so uh, he uses his, he has got a live show and a podcast and he uses that to actually collect leads. And so if there's a company that he's targeting or a company that he's interested in working with, he would invite their marketing people or their founder on the show and they would talk about like, what's a SaaS marketing? What's a PCP? What's a, what's a marketing question or struggle you are dealing with right now? And Dylan solves it on camera on the show. They troubleshoot it, they work through it. And it's a way to one, help his clients, help others that are listening to it. And also a way to, uh, also a way to show off his services, right? So what can he do? What is he capable of? And that's a way that, um, you know, it's, it's how he uses, it's one of his ways that he uses to draw clients into his agency. 
right? Uh, a third example we have, this was from 2020, actually. His name is, as the photographer's name is, um, gosh, I just blanked on his name. <laughs> Tommy Reynolds. Tommy Reynolds. He's a photographer in the UK. And of course, 2020, everything shut down. He was a commercial photographer. Well, so we weren't doing commercial photography shoots anymore, right? And so he actually turned a live video to do a behind the scenes of what his, uh, about how his studio works. How do you set up for a commercial photo shoot? How do you do makeup? How do you pose? How do you, all these things that unless you really have been on a photo shoot that you wouldn't really know, right? Or you'd be kind of curious about. And he has partnerships, I think, with um, like makeup companies or, make, you know, makeup artists or whatever. I'm just like, what what makeup looks good on camera? How do you, uh, you know, how do you, how do you pose? How do you do? And so it was just a way for him to expand his business. And it actually brought him more business mm. around the pandemic because one, people knew exactly what to expect from a commercial photo shoot. It was a way that he could still continue to promote and advertise his business, even in the, even despite the fact that he couldn't necessarily do photo shoots at the time. Yeah. And it was, and it actually expanded his reach, right? Because people were, even if they weren't in the UK, they're still curious about what he was doing, right? They're still curious and interested in what he was, what he was uh, working on. Um, and then my third example is actually one that we use here internally at uh, Restream. It's called Livestream with Restream. And every other Wednesday, uh, a member of the marketing team and a member of the support team go live. And we talk about one, our new, uh, our new products, new updates. And we share that with our audience about how to, how to use it. What's cool about it. We talk about use cases of just stuff like how to engage in comments, how, what cameras should you use? What light should you use? But a bulk of that time is really just spent on Q and A live q a it is rapid fire we've got a million questions of people that like people want to know about using the tool like what what does this stand for how do you do this i've got this kind of business how could i use live streaming and of that 45 minutes i think 30 minutes of business spent on just live q a and so one it's a good way for us to directly connect with our customers now we have live 24 seven support, but sometimes like you've got a question, you just want to answer it right now, or you want to work through a problem and you want to just, you know, do it live on camera. So that's one way for us to connect. It's also a good resource for our product development team because they actually see what are the things people are struggling with? What are the, what are some of the tools that we could use to help people make this easier for people, right? Even easier for people. Um, you know, it's a good, I, it's good practice for our support team too, who uh, they interact with customers all day long, but this is just another angle to them and to the way that they interact. And it's a way for them to answer questions about our product, about what we do, about how we can help people. And we have all kinds of questions. Like I am a DJ and I want to stream this event how do I use RTMP or, you know, very, they, they drill down into it. And it's something that we have, you know, it's something that we have live on our uh, channels. And so you can always go back to and check it out. So it lives forever. And then you can also join us live for it. Oh my gosh. I love that these three examples are so different too, yeah. in that there are so many different ways business owners can leverage live streaming, especially now. I feel like because of the way that this past year has taught us how much connection is important and how technology can facilitate those connections, um, I, I think we'll forever be changed by those experiences. Oh. And, and I think it's almost an expectation now from users to be able to to connect virtually with the businesses that they want to work with, even if they're local. I love the local photographer yep. example and how he's still utilizing that. Um, and as a customer service tool, let's answer some questions live with our customers that's recorded forever where they feel supported um, and they can show up and get that kind of support. I love it. Absolutely. Um, so for those business owners who are maybe new, let's say they're just getting started with live streaming. Do you recommend creating a show or can they kind of go live um, as a one-time event? Oh, there are a hundred ways that you could use live video, right? So, you know, we could do it as something like what you're doing now, which is this live show, this one-on-one -on -one interview or one-on-two -on -one interview or what, you know, whatever. But there's a lot of different ways. So one, you know, we could do a behind the scenes. You can use live video to do a behind the scenes peek, right? Kind of like what our friends Tony Reynolds did, or sorry, Tommy Reynolds did with his 
studio. He opened up this private space, this otherwise private space to the whole world. And so it's an opportunity to give people behind the scenes look at your company, at your business. How do you do what you do and what makes you better than the rest? Right. Um, we also, you know, just like my example with Livestream with Restream, product demos, product launches. Right. So we had um, I don't know if you're if you've heard about this, but uh, Mercedes Benz actually just launched their uh, new line of electric cars this past April, and they streamed it live to over 60 channels all over the world. And it was the first time that a car company had taken everyone, everyone, this is something that's very exclusive, right? Like you have to be part of the automotive press to get access to this kind of thing, but it opened it up to the whole world, first of its kind to... Just, you know, this this like really phenomenal. It was an amazing launch. It was an amazing launch. But they actually took the live camera, took it inside the car, and they were answering questions about the car live as they're doing the demo, right? And and the there was an article about it in Auto Week. And the person, the person that wrote it, he was not able to travel to wherever because of travel restrictions and wow. you know, with the pandemic and everything. And so he was actually sitting in a gas station, I believe in Las Vegas, watching this amazing worldwide launch on his phone, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, he'd been part of the automotive press. He'd been to these things before, but he, like to hear him talk about watching this product launch in the middle of a gas station in Nevada, I mean, it was, it was like really emotional. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, oh my gosh, we're bringing the world together. Right. So, um, and even something as simple as like webinars and trainings, uh, you know, this is just a good way to get, I, of course, you know, everything has got, everything went online this past year, but I mean, it's something that people have like really have co- become accustomed to like doing summits, webinars, trainings, live video is a great way to do that, right? No one wants to sit through a pre-recorded video where you're just kind of like, oh, you know, no, no. we've all been through that, right? We've all, we've all taken defensive driving. We've all taken driver's ed. You know what it was like to sit through those videos, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but to do a live video gives it like that, that like personal one-on-one as if you're sitting in a classroom together. And that's another way that you can utilize live video, um, you know, events. Like if you are doing a live selling event, I know that social selling is huge. It is yeah, like every social media site has taken some angle on the idea of social selling. And you can do that. You do that all with live video and you can use that, you know, directly from your browser, from your home. You don't have to necessarily um, go to a retail space. And as we saw this past year, a lot of retailers realized like, oh, we have to get online now. We have to we have to find a way to showcase our product. People are coming to us. We have to come to them. That's the power of live video. And then another thing that you can do, and I, I do this in Restream actually, is to do one-on-one calls. So when I do... Um, when I do a Zoom call, right? I do it in the Restream Studio and it's completely branded. So I have our logo, I have our names. It's a, you know, of course I work for Restream, so it's a good way to show off our product as well. But it's great to bring, like, if even if you worked for a dance studio, even if you were a plumber, if you were a tax attorney, right? You could bring in your client calls into this fully branded space where it's your brand, your company, and it's just a really exclusive, really neat experience. And so those are some ways that you don't necessarily have to have a show. You can do it as a one-off thing, but do it regularly and just have fun and experiment with it because there's so many fun ways you can use live video for business. Yes. Okay. You've inspired me because I honestly haven't been tapping into this as much as I should. Um, The idea of pulling someone into a branded studio call very neat. I'm going to have mm-hmm. to look into that mm-hmm. um, because it, it makes them feel like that high level of service that we all right. want to kind of present to our clients and our customers um, and kind of show show off what we know and show off what, what we can do. So I love that. Very, very neat. Um, we do have a question here sure. about, a, about a competitor. So okay. I won't name names for the recording, but I know there are a lot of tools out there that you can use for live streaming. So yeah. being that you work for Restream, I feel like we're both a little biased. I use Restream, <laughs> you work for Restream. But tell us like the, the available tools out there and how we can best leverage them to really fast track this and get the maximum reach out of our live streams. Right. Well, I'll tell you right now, when it comes to connectivity with Restream, you can go to over 30 plus 
uh, destinations online. And that includes multiple Facebook pages, multiple groups, multiple YouTube accounts. So I know that some of these services, you have to pick one, like one YouTube destination, one Facebook destination. Uh, LinkedIn only has one destination, right? But like, uh, you know, LinkedIn. And with Restream, you don't have to choose. You can go to all of them. You know, even at like for the show that I produce and co-host, we actually go to Facebook, several Facebook groups, our own Facebook page, uh, our YouTube account, LinkedIn and Amazon Live. And it's a talk show mm -hmm. on Amazon Live. Right. But we're not even selling anything on there. But we, you know, for Amazon Live, we actually, uh, you know, we're, a we're able to uh, like if we have an author a writer, uh, we can showcase their their book that they wrote, right? Or we showcase the mic that we're using or the camera that we're using. So you don't even, yeah, you don't even have to be selling anything. I think at one point, like we sold an iPad during one of our shows because we we're talking about like uh, Clubhouse or whatever, right? So, and, you know, that's something that, you know, with, with Restream, we're able to do, right? Um, I will always, always, always brag about our 24-7 live support. And they are an amazing team. They're all over the world. And so you will get an answer. There's a little chat feature within the Restream Studio, and you will get an answer to whatever it is that you are wondering about within five minutes, right? Within five minutes. We also have a uh, fully stocked support site. <laughs> so I always say, if it's been asked, it's been answered, right? And so we'll probably already have the answer there ready for you. So even as you're typing in your question, it'll be like, oh, well, here's someone else that asked that question. Here's someone else. Is this what it is? But even then, like our 24-7 support, a member of our support team will work with you through whatever, and it is live human support. It's not a bot. There is not a bot. It is an actual person that you are talking to. It is Wes and Denton. It's Hannah in, in Paris. It's, um, where is Sean? Sean's in Tennessee. Okay, he just moved. So, you know, it is it is a person that you are talking to an actual human being. And these are my coworkers, right? They're people that like I lean on for live 24-7 support. And I also am very proud of the quality of our product. We are constantly innovating, constantly updating. Every week I sit in a product meeting where we are talking about, you know, the next, the newest, the best thing. And right now I have to brag on our HD quality TV, our HD quality audio and our dedication to video. And all you and I need to get on camera and to have the show is a good internet connection, a camera, any camera and a mic. Yeah. Ah, that's what I love too. It's like, it's point and click. It's easy. That's why I like Canva too. We talked about Canva earlier. Yes. I, yes. I don't have time to be messing around with Photoshop. I just need something easy. Just give me, give me the end result. And that's what I like about this. Yeah. Um, so one of the questions I have as well is that we have a lot of podcasters who listen to the show, who watch our show, who are aspiring podcasters, or they're developing their own show and they want to bring in this video element. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about using live video and then turning it into a podcast. What mm -hmm. is that process like? Well, it's just as easy as recording it. So even as we're recording this as a live video, right? People out there are experiencing it as a podcast, right? They might have it on another screen. They're doing something else. They're like moving. <laughs> they're collating tabs in an Excel spreadsheet. I don't know, right? So even if it is live, people are listening, engaging with it in the way of uh, the, they're engaging with the live show the same way they would a podcast, right? And so when we craft our show, we build it around that experience. And so if someone is showing something, we always say, okay, we'll describe it for our listening audience, right? Uh, you know, we do certain things in our run of show. So when we call out comments, we always say, oh, you know, Suzanne from Facebook asks this, you know, Ted from YouTube asks this. And so we bring people in into that experience. And so that's something that we've baked into our run of show and that we just have to be aware of. I've been doing it for a long time. So it's kind of second nature for me to do that anyway. But that is something that we're very conscious about. So as we're building the show, as you're building your your live show, we do think about the listening podcasting audience because I know that people are just listening to us anyway. Right. Um mm -hmm. One of the reasons why you should do it is that it expands your listening audience to viewers, which means that you don't just have listeners, you also have fans, right? So people that like, and, and it's accessible to them in so many different ways. You know, people learn and absorb knowledge in so many ways. Like some people are more visual, some people are auditory, some people need it written out. And it's another way of capturing, a, a you know, an audience that may not 
be keen to listening, right? They want to see, right? Or a same way, if someone like would rather listen than watch, you've got that audience. So it expands your audience. It expands your audience to meet all of these different needs, right? Um, it gives your podcast another angle, another level of interest. And then people also get to know you. People like, people buy or people, you know, they want to be around people that they like, love and trust. Right. And so that's another way to build live video because when they see your face and they see your excitement, they see your passion, they see how friendly and warm and inviting you are. It draws them in and they're more likely to trust you. Like for those of us that are launching podcasts for businesses. Right. Yeah. Uh, they're more likely to buy your product. They're more likely to buy your course. They're more likely to want to know more about you because they already feel like they know you. They see you. They see your face. They see how you react to things. They see when you make that weird face. <laughs> At least me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a something. Right. Um and it also elevates you as a pro, right? Because they see you everywhere, right? Oh, like, you know, who's that online Drea? What's she all about? I see her everywhere. She's on this podcast. She's in this group. She's online. Like, I'm going to trust her more because they see more of you, right? Yeah. And then for those of you that are doing podcasts where you're wanting sponsors or you have sponsors, um, the ability to insert ad spit, you know, to insert an ad into a video or to do a pre-roll or a you know, end screen with the ads, it gives you more opportunities. There's a value add if you're looking to advertise, right? It's another place to advertise. It's another place where you can put the sponsor's ads. It's another place where you can promote your sponsors. So that is very attractive to those of us that sponsor things. Yes. Yes. And that's that's how it works for me. So for those of you listening to the show, y'all know Fan Booster has been a sponsor of the show for over two years. And the more we leverage our audience, meaning we're not just a podcast, we also do video. We do video in multiple ways, multiple places. The longer they want to maintain that sponsorship relationship with us because we are truly invested in getting the show into like reaching more people, into more mm -hmm. people's ear holes, so mm -hmm. to speak. So yeah. I think that that's so interesting. And I know a lot of you listening and watching this have podcasts. So it's really easy as well in the Restream studio after the show. If you want to just download the audio, mm -hmm. do that, turn it into the podcast very easily. If you have some editing to do, you could do that as well. Um, if you're not like, for instance, this live stream is only for our paying members. We then turn the video later on into YouTube content. We break it down into like little micro videos for social media. Yes. So there's like so much you can do yeah. here with this yeah. one content piece that you're creating, which is what I love. And I love that you highlighted the personality piece because I haven't talked to you before today, but I definitely want to go listen to your show now because I really like your personality. And I think that's <laughs> the power of this, this sort of dynamic is that I'm like, oh, I need to, I need to figure out what her show is because I want to listen. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I love that you brought up um, the, the creation of micro content because there is an article out there. It's like your live show can be a social media marketing catalyst. And there's an article out there that identified 157 pieces of content you could create from one live show. Right. And it took it from like, I mean, it went like it went by each platform. So it was like Instagram and it was like, you could have a post, you can have a video post, you can have a carousel post, you could have a story and this is how, you know, and then it just went down the line. And so um, I don't suggest <laughs> that you make 107 pieces of content, but the possibility of making 157 yes. pieces of content from just li one live show, right? From one hour. And we do recommend some tools like within an hour, like Within an hour, right? You could just, like you said, download this audio and distribute it as a podcast. We use a tool called, um, we use a tool to do the, that does this for us. We basically take the audio, we slap on a uh, intro and an outro, and it's gone. Like after an hour after we say goodbye to everyone, the podcast is published. It's done. We don't even like, we don't even do anything to it. Like now, if I do say something completely wrong, I will go to my editor and be like, hey, Please take out that part or like, I said that. <laughs> yes. I do that all the time with my dogs. I'm like, so they barked about 12 minutes in. Can we just, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I think that that's the interesting thing. And, and I like to think about this as a buffet, right? So mm -hmm. even if you can make 120 different content pieces from one live show, you don't have to make all of them. You just pick what you want. Yeah. 
Do you want an Instagram yeah. story? Great. We could do that. Do you want to turn it into a YouTube video? Great. We could do that. Just pick a few what you can manage. Uh, but the great thing is that you can pick and choose and come back to it again and again, which mm-hmm. I love. Grace, this has been such a fantastic interview, a fantastic show. Um, for those of you listening, definitely try Restream. I'm going to put my link up on the show screen for those of you watching, but it's onlinedrea.com slash restream. And there's actually a brand new seven day trial, full feature, by the way. It's not like one of those trials where you just get half of what's available. Mm -mm. All of the things you can try it out for seven days. See if you like it. That's onlinedrea.com slash restream. Grace, where else can we hang out with you online? Well, you can definitely check us out and all the content we create on the Restream YouTube page. I would invite you to check it out, see what you need, get what you need. Absolutely, um, absolutely there for you. I also produce and co-host a show called the Social Media or called Social Media News Live, and it goes on Fridays at 10 a.m. Central. I'm not going to be on the show this week because I'm here in Austin at our headquarters, but I'm usually there every week and I produce it every week. So, yes, please check us out there. Awesome. And I'll put those links uh, with the description of this video and in the show notes. You can find that at onlinedrea.com slash 158. And thank you so much, Grace. Um, We will see you next week with a brand new episode. Bye for now. Bye, everyone.